Uh, let's go to work on the displacement map. Let's set to on the displacement. And we can have a lower displacement because I like just to add a little bit of detail. Um, actually, we have mainly um, a cellular map. I like to tune it a little bit. So let's go to check it there. Okay, uh, that's not the right visualization, but uh, we can tune it step by step. So let's go to have more tiling. Uh, so let's remove it from the view and we can see it there. And we can have a little bit of variation on the color in there. Let's see the map. So we can see how this looking there. And also the division color will be white. So we'll have just some detail uh, with a black just to create some uh, breaking over the texture and over the rock. Uh, we can get to have uh, a bigger scaling for these sides. And we can play with the spread a little bit to make more visible the, the breaking. Let's save and we can tune the render now we have no display no displacement and no um uh, i mean no turbo smooth i like to have more detail so we set to 0 0.5 the edge length for every face will be created by the displacement and we can go to have, let's say, 64 subdivision for every single face to create the new faces to generate the displacement detail. Um, we can save and we can see um, a preview to understand if the map is coming in the right way. Okay, first of all, we have more detail on the material due to the uh, reflectivity we are using. And we see not so much about the detail about the uh, turbo smooth so let's go to have 260 uh, 56 and maybe we can render a bigger area so let's go maybe for two minutes let's go for 800 so we are starting to see something there and it seems not bad about the scaling and the other, uh, other parameters. So we can tweak a little bit to make some differences. So actually we have just uh, this one. Maybe we can add also another layer. To add a new layer we need the mix because we can use the composite inside um, high ray. So keep all map and the second map can be a noise. Uh, this noise can be just to create some rocky structure all over. So I should go with the turbulence. Let's go with a little scaling and a higher levels. So we'll have more detail. And uh, I like uh, to uh, mix it, but not to use the mix amount because I like to have this map more visible in some areas and less visible in another. Harriots, so we can use a noise as mix amount and it will be similar to a mask. So we can go to have a fractal and the sides will be big. So we'll have uh, some big area with one map and other area with the other one. But we go lower with the high to make more contrast over this map. So we'll have some area with the map number one and some area with the map number two as you can see there. So it will be really nice to add detail to our surface. So um, that's, uh, that's nice. So uh, we have the material and the shader ready. Um, we can mm, maybe make a test with the, uh, the right mesh. So we need the turbo smooth. We need the displays. Um, maybe we can use not turbo smooth because it will be uh, too much slow to do something like that. So um, let's go to use the uh, displacement for setting a, 
uh, to create the automatic phase to add the tail. So let's make a preview. Uh, maybe we can make a preview for uh, uh, more little areas so we can focus all our uh, samples just on a little uh, area over the rock. Let's wait for to have back 3ds Max. So we have it back. Um, sorry. And let's focus on a little area and render. So uh, as you can see, we have a nice uh, level of detail over the rock. I really like it. So uh, let's imagine that the final one will be rendered using the um, uh, the turbo smooth. So we can go to have the turbo smooth. Let's wait. Okay. Nice. And the final uh, parameter there for the subdivision to have not so much face will be uh, 64. Okay. We can see. Now I like to see uh, to add also the depth of field. So let's select the camera. And we have to tweak uh, some parameters to have the depth of field but it's really really simple nothing so special you know in uh, uh, high ray the depth of field uh, costs nothing about rendering time so we have just to decide the parameters and i mean the target distance and we can see it there so let's go on the uh, top and make to use something like that and you see that that's the distance, the target. And the target will be really far, let's say maybe uh, 2000. So we like to have in focus this area. So maybe we'll have a little bit of out of focus there near the camera. And then to activate uh, the depth of field, we have just to set uh, the depth of field. So enable, and we go to have the depth of field mental ray. And this way we have just the parameters, the f-stop. And let's see what happens. Let's go with a really low value. But we need to have no displacement so we can remove it. And let's go there and select this area. And render. So we'll have no displacement but we'll have the depth of field visible. And it's visible also with a low amount of iteration. You see that here we have a really, uh, the focus of the area. So we'll go higher. Let's try with 06 and try again. Okay, you see that now we have just a little bit of uh, depth of field there and we have more in focus area, okay. So we have also the uh, depth of field. So we have just to calculate the final image. Uh, to calculate the final image, you have uh, two ways. So save. And inside the panel there, you can have uh, the possibility to decide how much minutes it needs to render or you can decide how much uh, iteration will be calculated and then it will stop or you can use the unlimited so it will render forever and you can stop when the image quality is right uh, I will try to use the unlimited so I will stop it when the quality will be enough and we can see together the result in a few when it will be uh, Really, but before I have to set back the displacement, stop, and then now we can render. Okay, so that's the final image I just rendered. Uh, I leave the rendering for uh, around one hour and uh, I have no more grain. So I'm rendering using just uh, 16 treat from my Duoxian and just one uh, GeForce GTX 780. So it's not so high uh, powerful about the GPU rendering, but it is nice, a nice workstation. So maybe you can need a little bit more if your workstation is a little bit slower. So the image is really not bad. You see that we have a lot of detail over 
uh, the rock and it is really nice there we have the water there we have the depth of field so now we can make a little bit of composing just to change the look the general mood of the image okay we are inside fusion let's go to have just one single screen and we can merge using the red mouse button input output loader and we go to uh, inside the Dropbox folder we get to load the cave and that's our render okay so uh, we'll do something really simple so let's go for um, a color corrector just to change a little bit the uh, the mood of our image and let's say that we use uh, the shadows and the shadows will be changed to something like that to have a little bit of bluish uh, over the uh, let's make just a little bit more over the image there and then we can play a little bit with the mittens and the mittens can be uh, a little bit over going around the yelp and then we can play a little bit on the master coloring and we move it a little bit to this area so we'll have something maybe uh, let's do something like minus zero five oh, sorry okay something like that and the strength will be enough maybe a little bit less so that's the preview and that's the coloring with the bluish let's go to change a little bit the contrast so brightness and contrast and in the brightness and contrast we'll use it to uh, have a little bit more lighting all around so let's go to uh, something a little bit more so you see we have a little bit of lighting and then maybe just a little bit of lift to have more lighting over there where we have the shadows um, then I like to add a little bit of glowing for the light coming inside so uh, blur glow you see that in this way we have too much glowish and uh, we can have just a little bit less let's say maybe uh, that the close sides will be really big maybe something like that but the power will be uh, less so just like a little bit of lighting coming inside and then maybe we can decide to have this light just on one area so let's make a mask ellipse uh, we move it there and we connect as mask there so you see that we have the mask over there and then we have to change just the um the soft edges you see to have it going inside and outside uh, let's use shift and control to move the image and maybe there inside the glow we can have a little bit more lighting so we have the light just there that's the image without the glow and that's with the glow so we have the idea that we have light coming inside the scene and then we can add a little bit of sharpness to have um, to have more uh, detail so let's go inside blur sharpen connect you see that in this way is too much we can have obviously uh, lower let's go for 0 0.35 and let's see that's without and that's with and I think that's nice we have a lot of detail all around so that's our render uh, let's go to see so that's the render and that's the compositing so you see that's how our image it's changing and that's really not bad okay so now I can save this one but the uh, the tutorial the uh, the course is finished we saw how to create a nice environment with a lot of detail just using procedural maps and procedural detailing over the modeling 
using just sculpting and displacement. And then we still have to use our array and some custom material using uh, procedural maps to add details over the rock and render a nice environment. So uh, for the moment, that's all. And I hope to see you back on Max Cookie to check for a new tutorial coming from cgcookie.com. Bye.